Hey everybody! Today I'm gonna show you my trip to Takamatsu City in Kagawa Prefecture. The purpose of the visit was to cross the Great Seta Bridge, known as Seta Ohashi in Japanese, and to eat the famous Sanuki Udon. My friend Ken and I departed from Okayama City in his car. Hi, Ken chan desu. Hi, it was a rainy day, unfortunately, but the trip was definitely worth it because the noodles were so good. Udon is a common type of noodles in Japan, but Sanuki Udon in particular is a distinct brand defined by the Federation of Fair Trade Conferences in Japan. Sanuki Udon is characterized by the robust texture of the noodles as well as the soup based on the flavor from dried anchovy, making it wildly popular and offered in dedicated restaurants throughout the nation. For example, Marugame, although not originating in Kagawa, is nonetheless a sanuki styled udon restaurant chain with massive presence in Japan. They also have branches around the globe, such as the ones in Hong Kong, Taiwan, Philippines, Vietnam, US, and UK. Here are some of the techniques used for producing the noodles for sanuki udon. To make its mesmerizing texture, they knead the dough by stepping on it by foot. No kidding. And the dough is left ripening on its own several times during its preparation, with the total ripening time amounting to at least 2 hours. The anchovy used for the soup is sourced locally and it's a delicacy on its own right. As for the wheat used for sanuki udon noodles, 95% of it has been imported from Australia recently. But when udon production first began in history, which was centuries ago if not a millennium, I would guess people used local wheat. Kagawa actually has a tradition of growing wheat at the expense of rice, which is much more commonly grown in Japanese farming. This is because Kagawa doesn't have as much rainfall as the rest of the country, so they've opted for growing wheat, which demands less water than rice. But you might wonder, as I do, how was udon noodles invented in Japan? There are many theories about it, but one says that Kukai, who was a legendary monk from Kagawa in the 9th century, brought back noodle making techniques from Tan Dynasty China, where he studied. And yes, this is the same Kukai, aka Kobo Daishi, who later founded the Shingon School of Buddhism and lived in today's UNESCO World Heritage Site, Koyasan. I am personally in favor of this theory as I live in Wakayama Prefecture, which contains Koyasan. I'm a huge Kukai fan, bro! By the way, there's a cost to crossing the Great Sit Bridge by car, as it's a highway, and it was around 2000 yen, roughly $15, going from Okayama to Sakaide. There are different statistics about the number of udon restaurants in Kagawa, but I guess it's somewhere between 500 and 1000. The local news media Shikoku Shimbun says it's around 700, and NHK says this is more than the number of convenience stores in the prefecture. Currently, two businesses in Kagawa Prefecture are developing frozen sanuki udon products for export. With support from the local and the national governments, they aim to start exporting in 2025. This is Takamatsu Port, which is a terminal for ferry services bound for Honshu Island as well as the smaller Shoroshima and Naoshima Islands. I went to Shoroshima a day after shooting this clip, and it's a great holiday destination with olive fields, a rare sight in Japan. If you visit Shoroshima in winter, make sure to wear some warm clothes. I nearly froze to death due to the chill from the winds, but again, a nice place. By the way, if you are into Haruki Murakami and his novels, Takamatsu City appears in Kafka on the Shore, which was published in 2002. The 15 year old protagonist leaves his house and comes to this city, first arriving at Takamatsu Station and then taking a tiny train with only two cars. It has been believed among fans that the two car train was modeled after the one running on the Kotoden Shido line, as you can see here. And finally, we've arrived at the Sanuki Udon Weharaya restaurant on Chuo Street. 
If you want to look it up, it is on Google Maps. I apologize in advance, I didn't manage to record myself eating the noodles, although I kept shooting until just before I began. It was honestly the best udon noodles of my life. There has been a craze for sanuki udon among the Japanese for quite a while now, actually, like decades. I'm sort of trying to catch up with the trend. Aside from the production method mentioned earlier, sanuki udon restaurants are also unique in their way of serving the food. Their serving style is called seruhu, meaning self-service, and it is letting the customer serve for themselves. As you see here, when you enter the place, first you take a tray and a plate and start picking up the tempuras that will go on your noodles. You do this by yourself and you aren't even talking to the staffs at this point. Yes, it is like the buffet using the tongue and everything, but the difference is that you do engage with the staffs after picking up the tempuras. Speaking of which, I am taking 4 tempuras which is like a lot. I think people usually take a few, but I wanted to make my meal more protein rich rather than carbohydrate rich. I am so cool. After taking the tempuras, you order at the register in regards to the type of noodles you are having. The choices are typically kake udon, bukake udon, and kamaage udon. Kake udon is the most orthodox with the noodles submerged in hot soup. This is what you normally think of when you think of udon. Upon taking your order, they'll hand you the bowl of noodles you requested. Then, here's the first highlight of this experience. You warm up the noodles using a colander and a tub of hot water and put the noodles back into the bowl, all by yourself. Your nation is so proud of you back home. And yes, this is where you want to focus on your maneuver to avert any potential fuck-ups. And lastly, you add some final touches by garnishing your noodle bowl with chopped spring onion, shimmy spices, and grated ginger. If you'd like, you can also add some tenkasu, which is like small flakes of fried dough that gets produced as a byproduct while frying tempuras. I skipped it because, you know, I want less carbohydrates and I'm so cool. Here's my serving with a kake udon small size and four pieces of tempuras. Very athletic choice here. Japan roll. This is genmaicha, which is green tea mixed with roasted brown rice. And that's my buddy Ken, who ordered a kake udon large size and a few pieces of oden sticks. Alright, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button below if this was useful or entertaining. Bye.